Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to give an update today on my Lexus GX470 off-road build. I haven't done an update in quite a while and a lot of things are getting ready to happen to it and some several things have been changed since you have last seen the vehicle. We'll warp speed ahead a few weeks and show you uh, what changes have been made. All right, so for you guys, it's just been a few seconds, but for me, it's been about three or four weeks. And I am here outside of Yoda Mafia here in Holt, Florida, uh, where my GX has been for the last three or four weeks. And they've been working on it, uh, putting many upgrades on it, including my new rear axle from a 2019 Toyota Frontier, 4Runner TRD Pro. So let's go ahead and head inside now and take a look at it. All right, so here we are with the GX. It is finished. Let's go find Ryan. Hey, Ryan. What's up, Jamie? This is Ryan here with Yoda Mafia, who has Everybody. worked with me to get this GX all done. Ryan, man, I appreciate you getting this done. You're very welcome. Uh, tell me, Ryan, what, what all have we done here with this? Uh, we started, like you said, with the 2019 4 Runner Rear Diff. Yep. It has 456 gears with the e-locker. Um, we did the uh, Domison's upper and lower adjustable links. Did the long travel uh, Domison's rear shocks. We did actually some brake lines uh, manufactured in-house with us. Absolutely, that's them up there for the back. Um, we ran your uh, aftermarket harness for the E-lock diff control. That's right. Um, got you the vents, diff breather, got all that set up. Yeah, so the diff breather is right here. We've got that running up to right around the fuel tank up above yep. uh, so that it can breathe up there. Uh, tell us about this uh, Panhard Bar Relocation Kit that you guys got. Oh, did an excellent job that welding was, up. That was trick right there. I like that. Why yeah. Why it was appreciative of how nice it was a cut too. Good. Made his uh, welding job a lot easier. Yeah. Um, gave you probably what two inches of a, a raise, uh, so that you got to more of right. a, a factory so, geometry. Right. So the idea is when you lift the vehicle uh, with an aftermarket lift. It changes the suspension geometry and the panhard bar here, what you'll notice after you lift it will be, now this is droops, this is a full droop, so this is already lifted up in the air, but uh, when you're sitting level on the ground, you'll notice that your factory panhard bar is at a, a angle now and it ideally should be flat and level. So this, this bracket here, and I'll leave a link in the description to the manufacturer of this, allows you to bring up this end of the panhard bar to level it out. And that helps with on-road and off-road manners yep. uh, on these platforms. And that's a GX, 4Runner, FJ, Tacoma, all the same five-link rear suspension. And that is the piece that helps with that. All right, I see you guys also added some bump stops back here too. Uh, nice bump stops that are added in order to help with uh, the new long travel suspension. What kind of bump stops are those, right? They are the uh, Dura bumps. Dura bumps. Yep. Come okay. with all the hardware, uh, thread locker, everything you need to swap the OEs out. Um, well, let's move to the front of the rear axle right here. Yeah, this so this is the same manufacturer as the Panhard Bar Relocation Kit. Uh, this has to be welded up as well to the frame. They did an excellent job here as well. Uh, you, here you can see the beefy lower adjustable Dobison lower links with the uh, kind of skid there to keep damage from happening to these adjustability nuts on the uh, lower links but yeah you guys did a good job on that too now the purpose for this my understanding is is that when you go long travel and you beef up these lower links they have a tendency to kind of tear and warp the factory mounts so this basically braces the factory mount and also gives you a skid to slide off of in case you hit rocks right here and you will hit rocks right there for sure because I know I have done it several times so uh, that's the good thing about uh, about this they didn't cost very much either and so you'll have some labor in getting it welded up and it wasn't bad wasn't bad, wasn't bad at all to, bad to at get all. I mean once you got everything prepped and cleaned I mean they literally just slid right on of course they hard they give you the hardware because the bolt needs to be a little bit longer for added uh, the thickness right um, and just used it for alignment purposes and why it was able to run a couple of little tacks make sure everything was square and clean and then we burned it the rest of the way in great all right so I see right here behind it we have a new fuel tank skid that we've yeah. added also Much and this is from RCI I already have their full skid package engine transmission and center differential skid 
So this is just an add-on. And I noticed that I was hitting my skid when I was going rock crawling. And the thing is, these tanks in here are plastic. So on the factory skid, if you push it in, and it's real thin metal, then you'll actually deform the plastic tank in there. So having a good hefty uh, skid is important because as you can see here, it literally hangs below, the fuel tank hangs below the frame rail. In fact, it's the lowest hanging thing besides the rear diff on this platform. So protecting these fuel tanks are important. So with your rear diff harness for the e-locker, actually ran it up in between the fuel tank and actually hooked the, the, the harness to the fuel line. So they're zip tied out of the way. Okay. They're not gonna be rubbing on anything. And then pass through, and now I, want, I didn't want to go into the factory grommet. Um, Toyota is real good about having some pass-throughs that are uh, weather protected, but I didn't want to create a possible water intrusion point, especially with them being low in the floorboard like that, because then, you know, before you know it, your carpet's wet and you're unaware that it was right. leaking. So what I did was I actually used a grommet that's designed for a pass-through with this harness. Right. So instead of going through that body grommet, we just went down a little bit to the left. There's nothing else in the way. It's underneath the carpet and did a little pass through so that we yeah. get the differential control up to the, the driver. All right. So really, only thing we got going on as we move to the front is uh, we went ahead and did the uh, Dural Bump front bump stops as well. Uh, front brake lines that we manufactured. Just that we yeah, brake lines the all, all around yep. for... Did all four corners. And we got you a new steering gear. New steering rack. Completely new. new Back in there. So, not um, even a reman. You got the, the good one. You got brand new. Brand new from Toyota. I did get a Toyota part number. It did save me a couple hundred bucks over going with a Lexus. Same part number. Mm -hmm. uh, I busted this guy uh, at Windrock a couple of months ago. Got home and it was it was spewing fluid all out of this. Uh, this boot right here so i knew i had a link and yeah 220,000 miles it's time to change it anyhow and i went back with factory just for the dependability and yep. honestly didn't think i needed anything else at the time so um the diff's probably going to be a little bit hard to see but i did go with uh east coast gear supply uh in order to replace the front diff and to tell us about that front diff so like he said we did east coast gear supply front diff to match the 456s that were in the rear. Um, it's still open in the front, which is completely fine with it being the centered locker and this new e-locker. I don't think he's gonna have any issues there. Um, but basically, it's a all new clamshell. We reuse the, uh, the torque arm from the factory diff that we removed from this and just uh, reinstalled it to the new diff. Um, everything's okay. preloaded, uh, new seals, new bearings. So it's ready to go. We've got him with new fluid and, of course, instructions on break-in procedure. Yeah, we just talked about gonna, that. You're going to take off and, and break it in right, right immediately. Right away. So, um, but other than that, it went in smooth. Uh, it was super easy, really convenient. It's the fact that, you know, it's dropped off. We're ready to take the old one, separate what we need to, put it back together, and pop it back in. And it was, I mean, super quick, to be honest. So are we forgetting anything or is that it? I mean, that's I a whole that's it, laundry underneath. list of things that we have things. done here. Yep. And this thing hopefully will uh, perform off-road a whole lot better. Uh, there's the Magnaflow exhaust, which I've had on for a while. I really like that. It's the Overland Series, complete uh, catback, basically, uh, exhaust system. I do plan on doing... Oh, yeah, harness and stuff there. Oh, yeah, the, this is the, the wiring harness we were just talking about a few minutes ago that... Uh, is coming out of the 2019 Forerunner uh, E-Lock solenoid right here. This does all the locking on the diff right here. We also have a bud-built uh, aluminum skid on this. This came with the actual uh, rear axle, so it does do a good job of protecting the solenoid. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and let it down and take a look right. inside. See how much further the rear axles are dropped over the front axle. That's the Dobbinson long travel suspension back there. I already had three inch lift from Dobbinson uh, to go long travel. I changed my shocks out from regular travel to long travel shocks Dobbinson provides. I bought all of that here at Yoda Mafia. Uh, they are a reseller of Dobbinson products, so hit them up if you need something. All right, so now we're inside the GX. Just to give you a perspective, getting in, this is the location 
of the new rear diff switch. This is a factory Toyota switch. Uh, and Ryan, can you go ahead and tell us about uh, what you did here and, and when activating it, how you can tell it is activated? Yep. Um, but basically, we put an LED indicator light on the corner so that doesn't come that way. We actually, he picked it up, uh, I believe it's right a here. blue C um, 12 and 24 volt LED indicator in, in an amber color. Um, and drilled a small hole in the side there. And so basically with that harness, it gives you an indication circuit. If you choose not to use it, you omit it, cover it with some uh, heat shrink, and you don't use it. So the good thing about this is the fact that when it is engaged and it's on, that switch closes the circuit in the pressure switch. Therefore, it closes the circuit on the LED, which then turns it on so that you know this is actually engaged. That's great. Of course, disengagement is just as important too. Yeah, coming off the trail, you don't know. Because we don't have a factory rear lock, I do have right. a light on my dash for my, when my center lock is engaged, but I don't have one for the rear because it's not factory. So adding that yep. LED in is important in order to know when that has engaged and disengaged out of the bag. We're going to test drive now. You ready, Ron? Yep, we'll get it right here. Obviously first driving impressions are really what we're looking at here is the way the gears feel. Besides that, we really have to do some off-roading in order to put the rest of the stuff to a test. So uh, let's see first impressions of the, from stock to four, five, six. So I don't know that I can tell an immediate difference other than just a slight bit of, it feels like the weight has gone back down to the stock wheels. Right. And I don't have as much. So initial off the line feels a bit more responsive and peppy with the takeoff. Right. It's been it's been a little while since I've driven it myself. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest difference right now. And of course, you know, I have to see when I get out on the interstate what kind of RPMs I'm turning. And then kind of veer off to right here to this soft stuff. Because you'll feel it kind of start absorbing. Okay, so now if you want to stop, uh -huh. go ahead and just push and turn up. There you go. Now go forward a little bit like we discussed. Just let out, go. Let's see if it's, it's engaged. Oh, okay. Yep. So that light could be a bit brighter, right? Yeah. It is really dim, it is, isn't it? It is very dim, especially when so, you have some sun behind you. Yeah. I mean, at night you could tell it, but I mean, I could barely tell it right now. Yep. I should be three wheel locked right now. Yep. How smooth it is to have oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Alright, let's get her unlocked. She was unlocking quick, yeah. She unlocked quick. And then, then just I need to put in neutral there, right? You can. It takes the load off of it, but you can just turn it off and then roll forward nice and light. And then it'll disconnect. It's still, it's still connected. There it you go. Goes. And it goes off. Perfect. And we got the air on because you know why not? Uh -huh. um, but if it's quiet, you can actually hear it click and then click out. Yeah. And you turn it off. So it's good to have an audible notice, but to have the visuals nice too. So dim. All right, let's go do some flexing. And it goes straight. That way it keeps. Up. Tires level. All right, right there. Now you can. Have we checked the clearance on the drive shaft with the? You're the hearing the the splash guards. That's what I was gonna say. Put it in park and we'll go check it out. I'll show you. Okay. So over here we are stuffed. Yeah, she is hitting the. Yeah. She's so stuffing it's, up it's in on the, the splash guard. Um, we can pull out probably another half inch on the lower links. Um, to be able to pull it forward pull it is what forward, you mean, correct. right? Because yeah. whenever you have a uh, compression of an axle with it having a fixed point, yeah, it's basically has a base circle effect, an arch to it. Sure. So the more it compresses, the further it moves to the rear. So right. Therefore, when we have those adjustable links, this is a starting point. Now we know we can pull them forward a little bit so that they're not too far forward when they're drooped, 
but they're right. not too far far rearward when they're compressed as you see here yep it looks um, like we do have some take, take a look at the so that's the reason for the, the adjustable links in the rear too right yep so it's a good thing we got those oh yeah see so now whenever it goes starts to go down it's going to want to go forward so we need to still adjust it a little bit to find that happy medium between the and i guess they could operate that. differently on each side too right mm -hmm. yep now this being the side that does not have the pan hard is obviously going to be a little more droopy typically yeah. All right, so one of the issues over here with the long travel suspension, they have a tendency to get into the fuel tank skid, at least the factory. So I wanted to see what it looked like back here. And as you can see, it's getting really close to the aftermarket RCI skid. Is it touching it at all? Nope. I mean, it's very, 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 very close, but it's not touching. We could always lob some of that off there at the end if we needed to, right? Yep. We might Clearance be able it. to scoop just a uh, smidge that way as well. Oh yeah. Well that's it folks. Uh, you want your off-road truck to be modified, bring it over here to Yoda Mafia in Holt, Florida. Uh, here Ryan will take good care of you. He's taking good care of my GX. Uh, one of the only people I would trust to work on my GX besides me. And so you're in good hands here at Yoda Mafia. And uh, they can do all kinds of modifications and they can order a lot of parts too. So make sure you hit them up. Uh, link in the description below to their website. And uh, hey, we'll talk to y'all very soon. Appreciate you viewing this. Take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye. See ya.